Hello everybody, welcome to Tokyo Station. There it is coming in view on the right side. And in this episode, we're gonna be talking about hotels, where to stay when you're in the city of Tokyo. I've been getting this question more and more over the last few weeks. In particular, this area, after I showed you the cheapest transportation to get into the city from Narita Airport, is the bus that'll drop you off right on the other side of this. I'm on the modern Ouchi side of Tokyo Station. The other side's called the Yaisu side. You see a little map down there with pinpoints showing you some of the accommodations. Everybody knows that you can use Google Maps to figure out not just the prices, but the area and reviews of the location. And that's what I did for a lot of you because if you're asking me, a local who lives here, I don't actually stay at hotels. So I did what you would normally do, which is research. And let's get to it. I want to introduce you to this area before uh, we get into the hotels and the prices to it. This is a pretty, pretty interesting uh, uh, video that I made. Let me show you what it looks like coming down into Tokyo Station. There's lots of areas you could stay at Shibuya, Shinjuku, Ikebukuro, Ueno, Ueno, Skiji. But Tokyo Station is a popular place because around it you've got Nihonbashi, you've got the Maranouchi Otemachi on the far side of there, you have Ginza, Yurakcho, Shimbashi, all in this one area. So this is a popular place. There's Tokyo Station right above on the top there. And you see all these buildings. A lot of them are hotels and a lot of them are businesses and a lot of them are places to eat, of course, in the city of Tokyo. This is the Yaisu side that you see in the foreground. And in the background, you see the Imperial Palace, which is a green area. And on that side, the hotels are going to be pricier. I'm on the other side of the hotel. We're gonna start down here. Um, this is kind of, I, I've shown you this point on the Sumida River quite a bit. So starting from the other side of the river, you'll get into the Tokyo Station area. This is Shinkawa, an island connected by bridges there. There are a lot of hotels there and it's only a five minute taxi ride for three, two, one to the station to get there. So this whole area that you're seeing, the prices for the hotels are very reasonable, very close to the station. Um, but it's when you get to the other side, and we'll take a look at the prices for those, but when you get to the other side, those skyscrapers on the right side, that's Otemachi. And the most expensive hotel, maybe in Japan, is in this area. I'll tell you what that is in a couple of minutes. A lot of high rises, a lot of money. There's business reasons to stay here. The one in the center of your screen, that white building is the Palace Hotel. That I've stayed there and it was a very nice stay. I didn't pay, um, a client paid, but uh, you can see Tokyo Station on the right side. It's pretty close, isn't it? So if you have some money, you're gonna be staying on, on the Marunouchi side, on the side of the Imperial Palace with the Emperor, but my recommendation to you is to stay, if you're on a budget, a little bit away from here in an area that a lot of you know. It's called Skiji Market, and we're kind of moving in that direction over there. These hotels now on the Yaisu side are all very reasonably priced. In fact, all of them that are under 10,000 yen are on this side. But if we move over now to Skiji Market, we're kind of flying over there right now, there's Kachidoki bridge right there that was built after the Japan-Russian war, the turn of the 20th century. And that landfill on the, on the foreground is the old Skiji market. There's the parking garage. And now on the bottom, you see the street food places. But these hotels in this area are some of the best because not only you have the market there, they're connected well with, with transportation. You've got Ginza within walking distance and Tokyo Station's really close. There's Ginza right there. You can see the uh, Ginza 6 building on the right side now just flying by here. That's the main Chuo Dori that goes through here. So the Tsukiji area may be one of the best places in Tokyo to get an accommodation um, and have entertainment around there. Shimbashi might be really high on your list. You see Nihonbashi now where the highway is up there. Hakozaki, that's another place where you can get the, the T-Cat bus. But it's Tokyo Station, this area that is really popular because of the connection to the Shinkansen, because of there's a lot of things to do and see. And it's a hub to get to the other places. The Yamanote line stops here and that'll take you around the entire city of Tokyo. But this gives you an overview of the Tokyo Station area. I hope that's useful to get an idea because now we're gonna break down not the best hotels that you should stay at, 
because I don't know that. I mean, I live here. Why would I stay at a hotel? Although, I would love to stay at this one right here, and we're going to feature that in a second. Um, at least I'm going to show you where it is. It's right behind me. That's the Tokyo Station Hotel that's been newly uh, renovated since this whole facade on the, on the modern Uchi side has been renovated. Um, oh, look, somebody can see me from here. This is a live stream. Well, come on down and say hi. I don't think I have a You Found Me card, though. This is going to be a quick live stream, like 10 minutes. Um, okay, so let me, let me show you where exactly the cheaper hotels are. So th this graphic that I have here on the bottom, you see Tokyo Station on the uh, like lower left side right there. You see the rail networks, of course, Nihonbashi. All of the cheap hotels under 10,000 yen are on the Yaisu side towards the Sumida River. This is the only place you're going to find budget accommodations. On the, on the left side, the Maranucci side near the Imperial Palace, you will not find anything under 10,000 yen unless you're camping at a McDonald's with a cheeseburger and hoping that they don't kick you out. But I don't even think there's a McDonald's on this side that's open 24 hours. So you want to stay in the Tsukiji area, I would say. There's also the um, Ningyo, Ningyocho area seems to have it near Sui Tengu Shrine there. That, that there seem to be some hotels under 10,000 yen. That's a neat area. Bakuro Yokoyama, Bakuro Cho area, known for its textile regions. And then along the Kanda River, which is the one that goes up through there, there's the 8,827 yen hotel. Uh, no, wait, that's not the Kanda River, is it? No, that's one of the canals. You'll find um, really reasonable accommodations in this Hachobori area down the bottom of your screen, Hachobori and Shin Tomicho which has an APA hotel that my friend Scotty stayed at when he was here, and he was reasonably happy with that. I'll show you what that, those accommodations look like. But you can see quite plainly all of the hotels that are under 10,000 yen, which is about $70, are on that side. So when you ask me where to stay, make sure you tell me what your budget is, because I dollar the Tokyo Station Hotel, budget be damned. So. There's that. All right, now I broke it down between 10,000 yen, it was at 10,000 yen and 20,000 yen. And you can see the, uh, the accommodations get closer to Tokyo Station as you do that. Now there's still some accommodations on the Sumida River on the right side near Morishita Station. Um, those are really nice. I think you get more for your money out there. You're going to get more spacious rooms. You're going to get um, more relaxed and quieter experience. But now you're starting to see the hotels creep closer to Tokyo Station's Yaisu side on the bottom there between Yaisu and Ginza. There are more hotels there. Nothing on the Otemachi Marunouchi side near the Imperial Palace. Nothing between 10 and 20,000 yen. It, it's, it's telling, right? If you're going to live near the emperor, you better bring some moolah. <laughs> that means some hard cash. <laughs> All right, things get a little bit more interesting now. So between 20 and 40,000 yen, the options are more limited. You see they're closer. There's some that are out further on the uh, right side uh, near Sweet Tengumai. This is the Ningyo Cho Hakozaki area, which is good for business travelers to get in and out of the city really quick because you're right on the highway there. Uh, but you also get closer to um, Tokyo Station here. I think that's like the Shangri-La maybe right there. There's some hotels in front of the station that's going around 27,000 yen. What is that? Um, like $180, $200 maybe. And you have one hotel on the other side in Otemachi. That is the cheapest accommodation. I'm not sure exactly which one that is, but you're starting to see it creep a little bit closer towards the Imperial Palace. All right, let's get to the ridiculous now. This is 40,000 to six to sky's the limit, okay? 40,000 to sky's the limit. Um, we're starting to get on the modern Uchi side. In fact, most of them are right near Tokyo Station because this is where people would have um, budgets for it. And close to the Imperial Palace, that 101,000 yen is the closest to the Imperial Palace. That's the Palace Hotel. That's been newly renovated. It is really gorgeous in there. And the balcony allows you to overlook the the emperor's residence, which is pretty cool. It's in all the trees and the forest there. Um, the most expensive hotel in Tokyo is here, apparently. 
Now there's suites and stuff like that at other places that might be more expensive than this, but generally speaking, the cheapest room is the most expensive room. So <laughs> that's the, can anybody guess what, that, what hotel that is? This is a live stream. It's in that direction right there. This is the Otemachi region. You're very close to Tokyo Station, which is convenient. Does anybody know what that hotel is? That's, that's over $3,000, pretty much the start. <laughs> no, it's not the Imperial Hotel, Saya. That's $101,000 or about, about $700 US a night right now. This one's even more expensive. It's a new one, Four Seasons. Good guess, Four Seasons is in uh, Nihonbashi. Hilton, no, that, the Hilton is over at, uh, in the Shinjuku area. Imperial Hotel, no. The Ritz-Carlton, no. That's, I think that's closer to Ginza, right? It's the Amman Hotel. The Amman Hotel is absolutely, it's, a, it's such a beautiful hotel. Check it out here. This is the room that you would get. Look at it, it's, it's just so stunning. You have maybe the most beautiful view that you'll get in the, uh, in the city of Tokyo from here. I had a friend who stayed at the Amman, believe it or not. And uh, I got a chance to tour her room. I, I didn't believe it. When she told me she was staying at the Amman, I couldn't, I, I said, what, really? You probably wanna enjoy your experience. She's not coming here all the time. So she stayed there for just, uh, what was it? I think she stayed for two nights and it was uh, like th three, four thousand dollars $4,000. This is when Amman just opened too, right? That's pretty crazy. But it's a beautiful hotel, the Amman Hotel, five stars, maybe even six if, they, if you can go that high. Um, the hotel behind me, I see that Vaughn chick is here. Vaughn, how you doing? I totally wish that I could stay there too. I have stayed there, but I, again, like I, I didn't pay. <laughs> I don't think, Peter and I both stayed there. Uh, we shared a room. Did we share a room? Right before a, uh, yeah, we did because we were doing something with Japan Rail. We rode a, a private train to Morioka. That video is on the new channel. It's a pretty cool video. We ate like 20 bento. Video, uh, where is it, right here? You can check that out. We rode all the way to Aomori eating like a bazillion bentos. I have always wanted to stay at this, ho this hotel. This one, people ask me, what is the closest hotel to Tokyo Stations? It's the hotel that's like inside of Tokyo Station, pretty much. That's this one right here. This is the Tokyo Station Hotel. It's actually for the area, it's reasonably priced. Um, if you could call it that, it's about 500 bucks a night. I put there June 12th to 15th because I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be making a trip to Hawaii soon possibly and I'm looking at hotels so Google just kept that in the search. But that's what it would cost if you were coming here next month. Um, what you get, some pretty nice renovated rooms um, and you can't get any closer than Tokyo, to Tokyo Station than inside of Tokyo Station. Um, the next question that you're probably asking, because I would, what is the cheapest hotel in the area? The answer is there isn't any. It depends on what your budget is, but if you're going for under 10,000 yen, I did do a Google search for you. Let's see here. Um, there aren't that many available. Here, oh, that's the most expensive ones here. Guys, let me see here. So you can see under 10,000 yen, there aren't a lot of hotels here, right? But there's one, oh, it's, it's off of the list here, near Shimbashi, it gets under 8,000 yen a night. Can anyone guess what that's called? Does anyone want to venture a guess? It's, it's live stream, it's interesting. It's not the Appa Hotel. Although the Appa Hotel can get down to 5,500 yen for a business hotel, you probably won't find those prices around this area. They'll probably be closer to 10,000 yen just because of supply and demand. The demand is very high right now. All right, the hotel is called, um, here it is on the screen. It's called the uh, Hotel Owl Tokyo Shimbashi. It's 5,890 yen. The location is pretty good. Shimbashi, this is on the old side of Shimbashi and uh, it's, it's even got stars, two stars. And the reviews rebated even higher. For the budget, I don't think you can, you can do, do any better than, than this. Uh, here's what it looks like on the inside. Do you have a picture of that? There you, uh, yeah, I do. It's basically like a capsule hotel. You get what you pay for. I think there's a, they're bunk beds, but they have walls around the beds. And I've seen this more and more with budget hotels. What they've done is taken the bunk beds and added a little bit of privacy with a curtain and walls around there. 
Um, but still, if people move around, the whole unit might move depending on how solidly built they are. I've stayed in these places as well. There's a socket to plug your stuff in. If you, if you go to the 100 yen shop, you can get a, a splitter where you can plug in four or five things into there to charge stuff. So you can have a little bit of privacy in there. And again, it's a pretty reasonable price. For one night at the Amman, you could probably stay here for like two months, all right? So you have to kind of price it out. What, what stage in life are you at? If you're under 30, this is a pretty good, pretty good. Actually, if you just want to save money, this is a pretty good location. Um, you can't beat Shimbashi. Really. Um, do you have any questions? I wanted to get this really, really um, quick. Again, like the reason to stay here compared to other areas would be mostly for convenience and I'll walk towards I know that the signals not great over here I'll walk over towards uh, Otemachi a little bit to show you the reason that you would you'd want to stay here is because you want to be near the Shinkansen you want to be near public transportation hubs it's a little bit a little bit quieter in this area compared to Shibuya Shinjuku you do feel like you're in Tokyo a lot of business people will stay especially in the Maranouchi area right about here um, they are also I'm glad that you brought this up here. Um, yeah, uh, Chime writes in a CHYME, what about the Airbnb? There are a lot of Airbnbs, but there's a law in Japan where you can't have an Airbnb for the entire year. So what that does is they didn't want Airbnb competing with the hotels. Well, guess what? Right now there's limited space at the hotels and the prices have gone up and because Airbnb are also limited to the, the amount of months that they could actually operate, so they're not competing with the hotels, unless the law has changed, could be wrong. Those prices are pretty high too because those owners have to make money in a certain amount of time. I think it was nine months out of the year or six months out of the year in Kyoto or something. I can't remember, but you'll find a limited amount of Airbnb here and they might not offer the whole time, but they're going to be pr quite pricey right now, more so than they were before You know, the borders were closed. I don't even want to say that word anymore. <laughs> Starts with a P, ends with a C. Emic. You know what I mean. Yeah. And for me, I, have, I don't need to stay in a hotel here because I live in this, in Chuoku, which is this area. My bicycle, I got here in about eight minutes. So I don't, I don't need to stay here. But if I did and I had the money, I probably would be holding up at that palace hotel again. And if I won the lottery, I'd be at the Amman for like a month. I did, I did take Kanai to the Amman for our anniversary last year for lunch. It was expensive, but it was so good and so worth it. So if you can get a reservation, go there for tea time. You could just go there for, for coffee and desserts or something, and you can kind of bask in the glory of the Amman Hotel, which is just absolutely stunning. And I'm not, gonna, I'm not giving them a, an endorsement, although I am. That's just the most expensive hotel, and I've had the, the pleasure of taking a look inside of there. Um, I have not taken a look inside of here, though. And if you have stayed in, in the uh, Tokyo Station Hotel, let me know how it is. I, the rooms look like they're a little bit older, but I bet you there's more of a classic feel to them. I just remember that I did an interview for I think it was Yokohama Radio, like eight years ago, talking about, um, what did I talk about? I wasn't talking about only in Japan. I was talking about Weblish, my um, like a comedy eikaiwa lessons, I think, at the time. I can't remember. It was so long ago. But uh, I had the interview with the producer inside of there, and he bought me a tea, and I think it was like like 25 bucks. So, <laughs> yeah, that was the greatest. Glad you paid for it. But that was my only experience in there. I did meet the concierge of there, so I might be able to go in and give you a tour one of these days. Uh, I, I did a presentation for the uh, Japan Concierge Association during the pandemic and got a chance to meet with a lot of really great ones. In fact, if you're a concierge of some of these wonderful hotels, please do contact us because I would love to show them and even spend the night there and give it a really nice review. It'll be a glowing video. <laughs> How could you give the services are so good? I, I have not had a bad service at a at a hotel in Japan that had more than more than four stars ever in Japan. In fact, I've always the I've always had my expectations exceeded. It, and I've been here for twenty five years, and that's really really hard to do. Um, the cheapest area to stay in the city of Tokyo is probably going to be 
My gut says around Ueno. Ueno, for those pronouncing it um, correctly. So if you go up to Ueno, you can get really cheap accommodations. But I would say, like, if you're looking to get into the culture of Tokyo, Asakusa area, Asuka, Asuks, Asakusa, like, we say Asakusa because that's the way, I think, mental. Asakusa area is very, very Asakusa. Very, is, is a very nice area because you're in the middle of the culture. You have Sensoji uh, Temple there, which has been around since the year 700. There's a lot of history in that area. And you feel it when you walk around the streets. If you have jet lag and you're waking up at four in the morning, if you're coming from the US, you can walk the streets there and it's really interesting. Walking the streets at four in the morning in Shibuya, not that interesting. So that's why I always say, you know, this is probably the best place to stay if you're going to be in the city of Tokyo. Um, and they're much more reasonably priced than around here because people are coming here for business a lot of times. They have expense accounts. It is convenient. You want to get on the Shinkansen. It's so convenient from Narita Airport. I told you the bus gets here in, in like 55 minutes for a thousand yen. But if you've got the cash to stay at the Amman, they're probably going to send you a, a, a shuttle car or something, I would figure. Or you probably have the cash to get a taxi, which is going to cost you about $180, maybe 200 bucks since the rates went up about 20%, a little bit more. Hotel, the taxi rates did go up, uh, I think the end of last year, a little bit, a little bit. All right, I'll take some of your questions for the next uh, five or six minutes. And uh, yeah, hopefully this helps you guys out. Uh, if it does help you out, consider subscribing to Patreon, <laughs> to the Postcard Club. I love to send the postcards out. I send out hundreds to people around the world. We've got an amazing, uh, in fact, I think it's 45 countries, including Greenland and Argentina and Barbados and uh, South Africa. And we have a Patreon supporter in Egypt and there's so many, uh, Saudi Arabia. It's, it's pretty amazing to have people watching from all over the world. I do appreciate that. This month's postcard, I don't, do, I don't have one on me. It's of uh, the uh, Shinjuku Don Quixote and the Godzilla with the Super Mario movie poster. Oh, there's something going on over there. Oh, I think the G7 is coming. So all the world leaders are coming into Tokyo, flying in. Antarctica. We do not, I don't think I've sent a postcard there yet, but I would if someone gave me an address for it. Um, Jarrah writes in here, eight nights for two double rooms cost 111,000 yen on a hotel near Kamiedo Station. If you go a little bit far, they drop. What do you think? Great question. Here's the answer. It does. The further you get away from the Yamanote line, the further the prices for real estate drop. So the further the prices for the hotels would drop, the further you get from the Yamanote line. If you're going up towards Ryogoku and uh, Kamiedo and Koewa even, up, up in this area, Katashika Ward, Kita Ward, near Kita Senju, the prices could get even like, like 3,000 yen a night. So if, if you're spending all of your money on the airfare, you probably want to save money on the, on the accommodations, right? And in that case, a lot of people, and I would say if you're under the age of 24, <laughs> but I don't want to put an age on anything. I could say like a manga kisa or a manga cafe might be the place to stay if you're trying to really save money. Before the pandemic, it was about a a thousand to twelve hundred yen which is like eight dollars a night and what you basically had was a community setting and you could just sleep sleep on the floor reading manga it's pretty interesting uh, uh, thing and I, I, I might recover that because a lot has changed including the price don't quote me on that but there's a bunch of companies that that have uh, gone out of business and some companies that have started again but when I missed the last train once I actually went to the police station because I didn't know the, that area of Tokyo yet. And he said that I, if asked me, he asked me how much money I had, like he's, he's, worried, he's a police officer. He just worried about my safety. Um, Tokyo police are, are usually pretty nice. Uh, he suggested that I stay at a manga cafe, a manga kisa, which was nearby, and I didn't. I said, okay, thank you. 
I just walked home and it took me four hours. I actually got home before the first train though. That was free. But the Manga Cafe, if you want to stay in that kind of a community setting, uh, probably the cheapest place. The next one up would be Capsule Hotels. I don't think that there are any capsule hotels in this area that I know of. Most of them are, are focused in, in the Ueno or Shimbashi. There are some in Shinjuku. These are more like where um, shotgun business types. The purpose of the capsule hotel was for, for business people to crash. You didn't have a lot of luggage, you just had your briefcase. So you would crash inside of a capsule and you would get up in the morning and leave. But there was a sauna, there was a place for you to eat. Everybody looked the same. You had a gym base, so it's a very institutionalized thing. Everybody, when you come in, you have to change out of your street clothes and into the capsule hotel's clothing. And this is kind of good because it also keeps everything really clean, right? So that was, um, that was uh, usually the cheapest option, and I've had to do that a few times, but I, yeah, I would rather stay in like an APA hotel than a capsule hotel these days. It's, it's because there's always one person who snores so bad that it shakes the entire capsule unit. You need, it's beyond earplugs, all right? And the TV channel selections were not my favorite. Like, it, there was like weird stuff on those stations. You know what I'm talking about, all right? So there's that. The next stage up from the capsule hotels, probably APA hotel or business hotels. And with that, you get what you pay for. They're usually one to two stars, often smoking rooms only, or the non-smoking rooms had been smoking rooms and you can still smell it because business people tend to still smoke quite a bit. But the typical price for a business hotel is 5,500 yen, which is 5,000 yen plus 10% tax. I've stayed in a lot of business hotels. Uh, Toyoko Inn is about this price. Um, that's a really good one, actually. But there are, there are local ones, and they're not so good. Oh, thank you. There you go. How cool. I saw some people that were watching. I saw some people that were watching uh, me like, and waving in the background, so. I, I appreciate that, everybody who's coming out. I don't think I have a You Found Me card because it's raining. Yeah, the best thing to do is to know your areas. Like I said, just to break this down before we end here, if you're looking at um, everything under, this is all of the prices in there. If you're looking for everything, this is the whole city of Tokyo. You can see that the most of the, of the pricey hotels over, oh, this is the other, other chart. Most of the pricey hotels over 65,000 yen or $500 a night are almost exclusively around Tokyo Station and the Imperial Palace. Do you see that? It's between Ginza and the Imperial Palace, going up to Nihonbashi and down to Shinagawa and going uh, a little bit to the other side um, of the Imperial Palace, but they're all pretty much located around the Imperial Palace. Those hotels are like five stars and above and like the service you get will exceed your expectations and the room you will get will be very spacious for central Tokyo. You, you will be blown away from that experience if you can afford it. Um, and the prices range anywhere from 500 bucks a night to, as you saw, the Aman, which is um, listed there at, at 323,000 yen per night for, to start. Okay, that's not even the top price. I see Brandani is in the house. I'm talking about this Brandania because of, I'm, look, I'm pricing hotels in um, Hawaii on Waikiki, I'm looking for places to stay and I'm blown away at the prices. And then there's these hidden charges for resorts. There's not even a resort there and they still charge like a resort tax, which is crazy. So I, if you compare, you, you can't, if you compare Hawaii to Tokyo, Tokyo is way cheaper. <laughs> like it's not even close. It's not even close. All right, I'll take one last question here. I'll take one more question here before we uh, um, end this live stream. How much do you charge for staying at your place, John? Ronald, you have to, have, you have to be like family <laughs> or a really close friend to stay at our place. And you know what? You stay for free and you get woken up by Leo at 6 a.m. as he comes and smacks your face, thinking it as a, it's some sort of toy. So 
or he wrestles it, which he did with me this morning. I had a book thrown at me from a distance. It had a little boomerang action as well. Yeah, I, I do want to say that there are some youth hostels here. Um, I just saw youth hostels be, being met. A lot of them went out of business. I'll be honest with you, I walked around um, that area, uh, around uh, Hacho Bodhi, there were a couple of youth hostels, they're gone. One of them, what was it like the Owl Youth Hostel that was there? That's, that's been torn down the entire building. A couple of them in the Kudamai area, Kudamai is just, just next to Askusa, this is a beautiful, like they call it the Brooklyn of Tokyo. A lot of those hostels went out of business. Some of them are still around, and it's really heartbreaking to see. They, they hung on as much as they could, but they were dependent mostly on, on young tourists to come in. A lot of them might come back, but right now it's hard to say if they're still there or not, so I would definitely call ahead. They would charge like about $35 to $50 a night, but you get what you pay for. Extremely clean. Um, it's a pretty good it's a pretty good stay and that's a quiet area so they ask you to be really respectful of the neighbors in the Kudamai area but there's a lot of um, guest houses and I guess like hostel type of accommodations bunk beds in a room you'd find that mostly in Kudamai or in uh, Ueno Ueno Okachi, Okachimachi area yeah Thanks for, bringing, thanks for bringing that up. I, I think I want to make this like an all-encompassing episode on accommodations. Uh, I've stayed a lot around the, around the country. Tokyo is by far the most expensive. I'd say 30 to 50% more than um, Osaka and maybe 300% more than Sapporo, especially in this particular area. Sapporo was really affordable. Uh, Fukuoka it was a little bit pricey too when I think about it. But in general Tokyo is going to be the place where you get the biggest hit. Those that have a family, I can't, I can't stress this enough. If you're thinking about staying at, at Walt Disney World, you might as well just stay at the Sheraton and spend a few more nights there. Cost performance, you're getting a really good, a really well-priced hotel for what you get I think at, that, at the Sheraton and those Disney hotels there because the space is way bigger than anything you would get in this area. You really are confined. You are really in a small, tight space in the city of Tokyo. I remember we stayed, my parents stayed at a My Stays. We couldn't find an accommodation uh, during the cherry, it was a little bit after the cherry blossoms, 2018. So the only place I could find for six people for family visiting was at this My Stays. So we had to break it down like two nights here, two nights here, two nights here, it was kind of a hassle. But I remember we, we saw for this one night, they had to stay at this My Stays near Daimon, Hamamatsuchu, which is where I was yesterday. It was really tight and made it through. I mean, you weren't really spending, you just had, using that as a place to crash, but I felt bad. Just the limit, you're very limited in accommodations. I highly recommend that you book three months in advance. Don't come to Tokyo if you plan to stay in Tokyo without a reservation especially for the first three nights. Don't do it. I will feel bad for you. Unless you're okay staying at that McDonald's with a cheeseburger and putting your face on the tray and waiting until 5 a.m. But by that time, you probably won't have a really good rest and might not be worth it. All right, everybody, there you go. I hope this is useful. That's the Tokyo Station Hotel straight ahead. If you, if you did stay there, leave me a comment because I want to hear what your uh, experience was like there. And if not, maybe that's a place to consider because you don't get any closer than that. Thanks for watching everybody. I'll see you tomorrow in another live stream. Leave me a question below if you have any about accommodations in Tokyo. And if you want to get me in a direct message, just, just sign up for Patreon. I, I check that like twice a day in the messages and I'm happy to help you with your trip. And it does help to support the channel. Thanks guys.